Okay, so in the last, uh, oh, still got to this too big. Do you know what? I'm going to shrink it. Oh, I was grabbing it. Oh, uh, yeah. In the um, last video, I talked about shapes of bacteria and. Oh, that's bad. And said, oh, yeah, you know, if we've. Um, for microbiologists, the first thing that they do is going to put the bacteria down the microscope and go, oh, yeah, what shape's that? And we've got those three shapes. The next thing to do is to do a sort of staining procedure called gram stain, which distinguishes the type of cell wall that the bacteria has. So, they come in two types, the cell walls of bacteria. So... We've got ones where we've got that phospholipid bilayer overlain by a big, thick layer of peptidoglycan. And that's sort of, you know, it's a basic model of bacterial cell walls. Because of the way that they stain, we call these ones gram-negative, sorry, think, 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 gram-positive bacteria. Um, and the reason that we do that is because they take up this sort of purple stain that we're going to use for the gram stain. Uh, gram-negative, slightly different, as you'd expect going to stain differently so still got a cell membrane underneath they then have a much thinner layer of peptidoglycan and then on top of that they've got extra layers so it's not just a case of having a thin layer so you can't sort of tell looking at them the cell walls will probably look fairly equal thicknesses but the peptidoglycan is covered by layers of lipopolysaccharides so these are lipids attached to um, polysaccharide groups and lipoproteins and these ones are gram negative so it doesn't matter what shape you are, so you could have, you know, a coccus that was gram positive, a coccus that was gram negative, a bacillus that was gram uh, positive, a bacillus that's gram negative, and so forth. So why are they called that, and how you would a microbiologist distinguish them? So the first thing that the microbiologist would do with these bacteria, can you identify this, stick it under a microscope, yeah, it's a coccus shape. Well, yeah, it's a bacillus shape. They then prepare a, they'd heat fix a smear of the bacteria. And we'll go into why you would want to do this in the first place in a bit. Um, once you've got your, your smear fixed, you would then stain it with something called crystal violet, which is purple in colour. Step three, between each step you always rinse with water and then you'd apply a mordant, which is a sort of fixative if you like. And we use uh, Lugol's iodine for that. Uh, you can use Graham's iodine, he invented the stain, why not? Now what happens at that stage, uh, and of course you would rinse it then, is that the stain goes through the peptidoglycan wall and the mordant fixes it. And when you rinse it, if your bacteria is gram positive, it will then appear purple. So positive is purple. Why is it purple? The thick peptidoglycan
retains the purple stain. Now of course that's great and you can put that under the microscope and if you've got purple cells you know they're positive but if you don't see anything you don't know that they're gram negative you just can't see anything. So the next stage is to, so obviously when you rinse them this purple stain is going to wash off the gram negative stains because of these extra layers on the top it's just going to disappear. Uh, so the next thing is to do a sort of a counter staining procedure. So. First of all, you need to get rid of all the purple. So, you rinse with alcohol. Now you've got to be quick with that because uh, alcohol will also take out the purple stain and you'd get a false gram negative. So you're going to rinse again with water. And then you apply the counter stain. So you stain with phenosafranin. which is red and this is a counter stain that means it will stain the bits that haven't been stained before and of course you rinse you then need to dry it and you know, shove it under a microscope and what happens with the counter stain is that those gram negative bacteria I have no idea whereabouts the stain's located. I'm just going to colour some in. Are going to retain, are going to be counter stained red. So, why are they counter stained red? Because the thin peptidoglycan, let me do that in red actually, It'd be less confusing, wouldn't it? So, these are going to be red. Thin peptidoglycan. does not retain the purple stain therefore the counter stain red so these ones look purple down the microscope these ones look red down the microscope now why would you need to know what gram status, what the cell wall was like. Well, it just so happens that these uh, extra layers here, so those extra layers of lipopolysaccharide and lipoproteins protect the uh, bacterial cell from susceptibility to lysozyme, which is the enzyme in tears that, if you remember, breaks down the bits of peptidoglycan, makes the cell wall less strong and therefore they burst uh, because of osmotic lysis, and antibiotics, especially penicillin. So definitely if you went to the doctor with an infection and it was bacterial they'd want to um, identify whether it was gram positive treatable with penicillin, gram negative not treatable with penicillin whether they'd have to use something else. So that's the cell wall and gram stain. Obviously in an exam you might have a picture of bacteria you might have to identify them from pictures uh, by shape and by gram status. You definitely need to know this stuff off by heart. Um, they might ask you, you know, wh why you, which one would be more likely to cause a, a disease, and that would be a gram negative one. Um, so you need to be able to apply it as well. It's certainly, you know, it's it's the way. It's one of the things that they do when you go to the doctors or if they're public health. You know they're going in and they're swabbing work surfaces and and they're looking to identify the bacteria that are there and uh, how important they might be 